For Slew's Portrait Still Life competition, I wanted to use this Lego set as my prop as I thought it would be funny to make it look as if it were about to bite me. It's also a distinctive and recognisable character that would stand out amongst other submissions. Before I began painting, I set about creating my reference material, which included taking these pictures to base the painting on, as well as other images that would help inspire the piece, such as different artists I like, and some extra references for the object. With these images, it's time to begin developing my ideas. I started by designing the caricature of my face, which involved doing a few quick sketches to decide how I would exaggerate my features. As it turns out, my first sketch was my favourite as I liked the long, wide open screaming mouth. After doing a quick sketch for the pose, I developed the first face sketch into a more fleshed out idea. This will also add likeness to the exaggeration, because of course I want the self-portrait to actually look like me. I then executed the same process for the pose, making sure all of the shapes are clear. I'll now develop this design into a final sketch. This part is the most difficult and arguably the most important part of the process, as I have to design all of the important parts of the painting that helps to create a clear and interesting image. For example, I'll start by redrawing the lines of my sketch, paying closer attention to how I'm designing the shapes that the lines make up. These need to be both interesting and readable to ensure a good painting. Once I'm happy with the line work, I'll start to design the lighting based off my reference. Lighting is one of the most useful tools that a painter can use to create the illusion of a 3D image. To make sure my lighting's readable, I begin by blocking out one big shadow shape. By starting with just three main values, I can assess whether the painting is readable, which at this stage I'd say it is. This gives me the freedom to expand my range of values on the basis that my key lighting shapes stay intact. A common method painters use to draw a viewer's attention is by using contrast, which comes in many forms. One example of contrast is contrast in value. You'll notice in this piece by Norman Rockwell that the highest area of contrast in value is around the face, which draws your eye towards that area. I've implemented the same technique in my painting, where the darkest and lightest areas are located on and around the face, which is where I want you to look. On the other hand, there's hardly any contrast near the bottom. In fact, the trousers are made up by almost entirely one value. I'd say at this point, the values in the painting are all organised, which means I can move on to colour. I start with a blue background for the sky, and then an orange base which I'll use to build the rest of the colours on top of. I'll also continue to adjust my values as they now feel much flatter with colour and require further contrast. Now that I'm happy with my sketch I can use this as inspiration for the final piece. I begin tracing my lines, adjusting them to further improve the design. And this time, as I have my values worked out, I begin painting with colour. I'll start with that blue background again, as well as the orange base. I'll then block in all of the base colours for each material, which is pretty much a guess as in real life you don't see base colours. What you actually see is how the light interacts with the objects in your scene. Using a multiply layer I can add the shadow. Like before I start by defining the biggest shapes of shadow, which allows me to develop my values later whilst maintaining readability. I find it easier to start with the whole of the subject in shadow and then erase it to reveal the light. Now that the whole piece is blocked in, I can finally begin the painting. At this point, there are still a few things to be implemented. For instance, the values in some of the colours don't currently match my sketch. So for the first stage of my rendering, I'll need to re-implement everything that gives the piece interest. This is most evident in the area of shadow on my face. As well as exaggerating my features, I also like to exaggerate the colours in my paintings. You can see in my reference that there is a lot of reflected light in the shadows, some blues coming from the sky and some reds that are bouncing off my shirt, so I'll enhance these colours in the painting to give the shadows more life. I hope you'll agree that the colourful shadows are much more interesting and realistic than the flatter monotone shadows. The process for the rest of this painting is now to assess an area, figure out what attention it requires and execute on the idea. One example of this is increasing the saturation of my hair. This is a decision that is purely based on my preference. It doesn't match my reference, I just think it looks better. And that's okay, there are a lot of things I have changed about my reference. For example, I swapped out the entire head, just because I preferred the other one. Similarly, I swapped the props for drawings that more closely match the designs from the games. And here's the final painting. There are a few more adjustments that I needed to make, and there are so many bits of the process that I couldn't cover in this video. If I had to take anything away from the painting, it would have to be the importance of readability. Make sure to check out my Instagram, where I've posted the painting, as well as the key stages of the painting's development. I'd love to do more in-depth discussions on other art topics for future paintings, so if you enjoyed or learnt something from this video, please let me know what else you'd want to see.
You can leave now. <laughs>